So when it comes to the prohibition of uh, mixing uh, milk and meat, yeah. it says in the Torah, Lo tevasher gedi b'chalev imo, right? Shouldn't cook the lamb with its mother's milk. Right. And the rabbis taught us that this uh, commandment is uh, on any kosher animal that was cooked with the milk of a kosher animal and it not necessarily its mother's milk right yeah. any milk and any kosher animal and why the Torah says Chalevimo the milk its mother's milk why the Torah says it, its mother's milk so it says the Torah spoke about the case that it's most common it's most readily available so you have the meat and you have the the milk from the cow and you have the baby, it's all there right uh, mm -hmm. in front of you. Right. So there's no idea. <coughs> you're shifting, no idea of you're shifting the fetus. Oh, there's many issues. Yeah, uh, many issues. Right. Okay. But uh, shifting the fetus, which is uh, it's mostly tender, the, I'm calling it fetus, but it could be a calf, a uh, baby goat. Uh, it's uh, very tender. And we are taking advantage of the milk of its mother to cook the lamb. You, uh, so, so to speak, abusing the mother's uh, resources, the mother's milk, to uh, thank you, to cook its own, uh, her so own baby. baby right. That's like uh, a chutzpah on top of uh, audacity on top of an audacity. It's like how far would you go with it? It's not to enjoy. Right. So. Uh, the Torah repeated this commandment three times. Of uh, You'll find this commandment three times in the Torah. And each one comes to teach us a different prohibition. One is you shouldn't uh, cook it. The second that we shouldn't benefit from a mixture of milk and milk. So meat. meat and milk. And the third is we shouldn't eat. So the prohibition of cooking, benefiting, and eating. Three different prohibitions. For example, if you had uh, your wife made a pot of chalent and uh, milk uh, spilled into into it, and assuming that it's uh, it's not being nullified because it's a large amount of milk and it's a small amount of meat, whatever the case is. So now we say, okay, at least let me give it to the dog or to the cat. That's uh, deriving benefit instead of going to the pet shop and buying more uh, dog food. Now he's eating this cholent, right. so the mixture, as you're not allowed to do it, right? Because that's benefiting, deriving benefit. Or uh, selling the cholent to a goy. So I made the beautiful dish, you want to buy it? Uh, he's allowed to eat at the goy. So by selling it, then you're deriving benefit. So it's a problem. For a Jew in general, it's a problem to uh, work in a non kosher restaurant where they would. Uh, cook these uh, dishes. If you're a chef and you're working in an uncoached restaurant, they tell you to make a steak <coughs> and then you put the butter on top, uh, it's, a, it's a biblical violation. By the way, you can see also that to talk about wine, if you have a bottle of Nesach wine in your house, you're not even allowed to give it to a guy. Right, yeah, uh, driving benefit. So, mm. so the Torah repeated this commandment three times. And as I mentioned, it's three different commandments. Prohibition of visual, visual uh, cooking, prohibition of eating, and prohibition of benefiting. And since the Torah used the word lo sevashil, the Torah said the word lo tevashil. You should not cook. The Torah said, the Torah could have used uh, do not roast, do not uh, fry, do not bake. Why does it say tevashel, specifically cooking? And the Torah used the same terminology in all three uh, verses. The same terminology, loisa, identical verses. Loisa vashel. So the rabbis learned that the prohibition of eating meat and milk and deriving benefit from it, it's biblically, it's only after it was cooked. Okay? That makes sense. 
Obviously, uh, once there's uh, before they're cooked, each one can be eaten. The and the rabbis uh, learned, uh, and the rabbis made a siag. A siag means they made a fence, a protection. What is a protection? To the prohibition of eating. Uh, the prohibition is eating the me meat and the uh, milk. But they say you're not allowed to eat also meat, which has come from a uh, chaya, come from an undomesticated, uh, undomesticated <coughs> animal, and uh, also the meat of a chicken with milk. So the prohibition is about behemoth, right? Domestic rabbis extended the prohibition also to a uh, chayo, to a uh, uh, an, an wild animal, an undomesticated, yeah. and also to chickens. Mm -hmm. Why? That's a siag is usually to protect you because if I can eat the meat of a deer yeah. with milk, People say, oh, he's eating yeah. meat, so we should also eat the meat it of the meat. animal yeah. together. Or they see you eating chicken, maybe it's a piece of uh, dark meat. Uh, they might, people might confuse it with uh, meat. And they say, oh, he's eating this, so therefore I can eat that. So it was established a uh, rule that we shouldn't, even when it comes to chicken or uh, wild oh. animals, we should not uh, mix them together. I heard you can't do like the tuna melt, like the fish and cheese either. Mm. So that is, it's, it's very, uh, there's many who are lenient with it. Like uh, uh, cooking, you're saying about cooking or eating? E eating. Because uh, like a lot of people eat lox and cream cheese and something that is accepted and it's not. Uh, tuna if it's a uh, Chacham Daniel will tell you that it's not so healthy uh, to do that. And the same argument is uh, we just mentioned about fish and uh, meat together. So, and he ends off the filu imitarvu bo adam karim. He says even if they were mixed together while they are cold and they were not cooked together, Chachami made this siag, made this fence, and you shouldn't eat them. The laws of uh, Meat and milk are, are, oh. are very complex. Very, very complex. And, uh, huge and that's yeah. why we mentioned uh, what yeah. to, to refrain from. The but if you go into the details of it, it becomes very complex.